Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Very tired, but out in Adam. As you join in today, be hopeful and expectant. Oh my goodness. And today is going to be such a piercing day. Oh my goodness. As I share my testimony. Hey, Ashley, God bless you. It is going to be such a piercing day as I share my testimony from last night. Hey, Margaret, God bless you. So, oh my goodness, it is called Pierce Me, Lord. Where is that in Scripture? Hebrews 4.12, that the Word of God is a double-edged sword that penetrates between our motives and intentions that divides between soul and spirit. Amen. And so today we're going to look at, hey, Carol, today we're going to look at repentance, repentance and fiery trials and tribulations. And I'm just going to show you how awesome God is. And if you feel like you can't go on one more day, you're in the right place for this broadcast. And God is just going to bless you and he's going to confirm some things. I'm looking at the ground because all these flowers have fallen off this tree and I don't want to step on them. They're like bulbs. Let me just grab one so you can look at it. This is it. It hasn't opened up yet. But I don't want to step on it. Isn't that amazing? Don't step on the growth. Watch the growth of Christ Jesus in yourself and others. Amen. Don't step on the growth. In Jesus' name. Here's one that's kind of opening. Let me get it. Oh, look, it matches my jacket. And it's orange. Isn't that beautiful? And so, thank you, Carol. And so, as I mentioned the other night, oh, let, I just got to show you the inside of it. One of them's broken open. Isn't that gorgeous? Man, that is so gorgeous. Hey, Donna, good morning. God bless you. And so, as I mentioned over the last couple of weeks, I've been going through some crisis, but God is good. And if anybody knows this, and I'm going to get in 1 Peter 1, 6, and 7, hey, so gaily, that God says, and I see someone else joined in, but I can't see who it is. But God bless you. I see y'all joining in. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so, as I did go to 1 Peter 1, 6, and 7, it is going to be so much confirmation. Hey, Cheris. I see Cheris. I can't see that other name. I'm so sorry, but thank y'all for joining in. And so, uh, 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 says, Think it not strange, these fiery trials, that is to test your faith as you suffer the testing of your faith, it, it is the testing of your faith and suffer temptations, that your faith, which is more precious than fine gold, is being purified in that fire, and it will redound to your glory, praise, and honor when what? Christ Jesus is revealed. And just like I showed the inside of those flowers, man, that was a good analogy. God brought that in. I wondered what, when he was going to bring it in. It is the revealing of Christ on the inside of you. Just like I showed you the outside of the flower, and then I showed you the inside of the flower. It is Christ in you, and I'll come back here in a minute. And when I come back, I'll pick it back up if it's in that area. And it's just going to bless you. Hey, have a blessed day. And so... Uh, first Peter 1, 6 and 7, who knew that better than Peter? And it's funny because yesterday I was talking about that Jesus didn't flog Peter when he restored him. He just asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And I did a message on that in 2012 as, as I preached on it, on that particular topic in scripture in John 21 and Luke 22, 31. And so last night in one of these fiery trials that I'm in, one of these crises, God is good. It always works. Romans 8, 28 to your good. And so things took a massive turn yesterday. And you see this smile? I've got joy. And I'm telling you, God warned me three days ago. He warned me. And God is good because he... Holy Spirit shows you things to come, amen. And so, as things happened, oh my goodness, 
I'll tell you what, this is how our God is. He uses that to allow the sifting of your members to show you that which is impure, unclean within so that you repent. You have a change of heart and mind. That's what repentance means is to change your ways. Okay. We can have a form of godliness, but we can deny the power of it. If we're not walking in the ways of God, we as Christians are to bear the fruits of Holy Spirit and we're to have fruits of righteousness. John 15, 8, which glorify the Father, as we are John 15, 2, pruned. Okay. And so last night, I did not sleep hardly at all. And Holy Spirit just was filleting my heart and going to my intents and motives and showing me that which had grabbed a hold of it that I was clueless to. Now, every year, I watch at least once since 2012 that John Melendi's testimony, who I think about Job, is the most righteous man at the time in that area. <clears throat> He and his team were, you know, praying all day long, reading the word all day long, worshiping all day long. That, he was a minister, a prophet of God. And he had a visitation of, with Jesus Christ. And the Lord showed him that if he came back today, he would not take John Melendi. And he said, I want to deal with your ways. Your ways. You're not just living sin and sin and John Melindy was unaware of this until the Lord began to open his the eyes of his heart and his own mouth and his own actions testified against him and so listening to that as well it filleted my heart oh my goodness and so last night I stayed up almost most of the night I kid you not I might have gotten two hours of sleep if even that and that was starting at 2.30. I stayed up until 2.30 in the morning. And I was in the bathroom all night long. I was, I, I mean, it got to my bowels. That it was like <clears throat> the medicine that you take before a colonoscopy. And how it cleans you out. Like, it had put the fear of the Lord in me so deep that... I just kept going to the restroom all night long. I was just nauseated, just grossed, and whew, God was dealing with me. And so in the middle of the night, as I kept praying <clears throat> and repenting, and God kept showing me things in my heart, he began to tell me, he said, Robin, Satan has asked permission to sift you. Luke twenty-two thirty-one. And I was like, oh God, Whew. I don't want to cry. But oh, he just showed me my heart and it just devastated me. And I'm gonna sit down Whew. and oh my gosh. I was wrecked. I was wrecked. And he showed me, he said, uh, Robin, I know you're repentant. He said, but Satan has come to sift you like grain. And I tell you, that is the hardest thing. Think about Peter and think about how he was so affected as he was sifted like great and how it had to really get to his heart. And he just thought he was disqualified. And all Jesus said was, Peter, do you love me? John 21, Jesus didn't flog him. Jesus didn't chastise him. Jesus just said, Peter, do you love me? Listen. Some of you are being sifted like grain, and it is Luke twenty-two thirty-one, and you have to know that God is 
It's these trials that get to a part of your heart that nothing else can. And God just, woo, he penetrates and he cuts and he brings conviction. And I just was, woo, all night long. I literally lost two and a half pounds through the night. It was just, oh my goodness. It was just, I was just wrecked. And it just, oh, it just moved my bowels. <laughs> and, you know, the Lord was just showing me how so many of us, oh, let me get to this stuff and let me show you these flowers again. This is the outside of the flower. Isn't that beautiful? And God wants to break that open. And he wants to get to a place in your heart that nothing else will get to. Now, let me show you the inside of the flower. And so here's the outside and it's starting to bust open. Let me see if I can find that inside part. I can't, oh, it's been crushed. You're not gonna be crushed in Jesus name. But let me show you the inside of this flower. I'm just going to open this up. You see that? Isn't it neat that that even looks like grain? I mean, y'all, I could not make this up. This, this looks like grain, and I, the inside also has some orange in it. And I think about the fire of Holy Spirit and the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. But doesn't that look like wheat? I mean... Whatever this flower is, it is a perfect example of being sifted. And so, <clears throat> sifted means sifting the wheat, removing the chaff, and getting rid. Here's another one. That's a better look at one. And it just shows that there's things inside. God also wants to bring out the good. But in order to bring out the good, he has to get rid of that which is unholy, that which is unclean, because without holiness, we will not see God. And so the Lord began to speak to me and he said, Robin, Satan has asked permission to sift you like grain, but like Jesus told Peter, I've already prayed for you that when you return, you will strengthen the brethren. And remember Peter preached Pentecost because he was so humbled, right? And that humbling worked to his good as he began to just be a mere vessel of God's glory. And so as God was showing me that last night, this is the cool thing. In my memories today on Facebook was about the sifting of Peter. And guess what? Scriptures from Job 42. Scriptures from Job 42. And you see in verse 5 where Job says... Before God, I knew you in my hearing, but now I see you. And what's so interesting is three days ago, and this has never happened to me, and it kind of weirded me out. Three days ago, I woke up and I'd been sleeping on my ear, and it was like my ear was muffled. And I looked it up, and that can happen from time to time when you're sleeping. And they said it might take a few days to clear up. Well, it cleared up, thank you, Jesus, the very next day. And all I could think of was, he that has ears to hear, let him hear, let him listen. So saints, right now, in this period where there is so much spiritual warfare, where there is so much going on, and you don't think you're going to make it, be encouraged, because you're being sifted like grain, and there's a place in your heart that God's getting to, that he wants to humble you and he just wants you to repent and it is the washing of the word of the truth in your soul and it refreshes saints all is well look for your form your identity in christ be blessed and know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world and just walk in holiness. God bless you. I love you. See you tomorrow.